Hi, I'm Rob and this is Gems of War. Guild Wars is back, so let's jump in and see what War 1 has for us today. Alright, up against the Legacy and Lord Sir Goth. This is a pretty dangerous team. Very dangerous in fact. Wow. Like the look of this. In a, in a bad way. <laughs> Doom Nopus deals scatter damage and then creates a mix of six red gems and skulls for every red enemy. And they know we're going to have red on our team, so that is a really good thing to have. And then uh, give three magic to all allies. If the enemy has a Doom, give five more. So that is their key. They want to get that charged up as soon as possible. And to do that, they've got two converters here. Both start with full mana, convert blue to red and inflict bleed on the strongest enemy and the child of summer converts brown to red and conjures a firestorm and starts with full of mana so we're really hoping for a little bit of luck on our side because there's not a lot we can do to change these converters there's no way to really counter it i don't think um a bit enraged kurandara is there as well and that is very very damaging if it gets to cast um but you can look out for it as well because it doesn't doesn't generate yellow gems first it just converts them you can actually look and make sure that you're not going to get actually killed by that if um it's ready to cast you're going to obviously accept the damage but you can check and make sure those yellow will not convert to doom skulls and if that's the case then 46 damage to all enemies in this instance is not too bad should that cast one of the annoying things about this is it's invulnerable so it can't be taken out by anything like a trick or treat or and things like that and the curse spoils things like the voice of orpheus even so it's really hard to get a decent cleanser in this side at the same time but we'll do what we can um i'm not going to use this team if we don't get a good start on our mana converters on this we could be in an absolute world of trouble really really quickly what i'm going to do is go to my more defensive red team which is this one this is designed to counter this kind of team um, and basically the idea is trick and treat inflicts all negative status effects on an enemy and grants myself all the positive ones by inflicting all the negative status effects on them basically if i can throw that on their weapon then it doesn't matter how much mana they get for these two to throw onto him if that is entangled it's not going to do any damage or it will but a little tiny bit of damage certainly not what it would do if it was to cast properly and i've got divinia there as our mana generator cleanser and life giver she's absolutely superb Second is there because it's an interesting troop. It transforms blue to skulls and brown to yellow, then deals damage to an enemy boosted by all other allies' and magic. Now this can be really good because we don't use blue, so by transforming those blue to skulls, that is good, and transforms brown to yellow, and we look yellow, so Sigma can work really well. Now, just in case things go completely pear-shaped, which they can do against a team like this, if this team gets going, we can get obliterated really, really quickly. We've got Flaming Oni in there because basically it's another mana generator, but more importantly, it does have a summon. And three goblin summons at that, so if we lose a couple of troops, hopefully we can stay in the game by casting Flaming Oni. That is the theory. Let's see if it blinking well works, because this is a dangerous team, I'm telling you. All right, um, just double check something. Snap freeze, insulated, thunder fists, rock solid. Right, fair enough. And on my side of things, I've gone for frost mage, as you can see, and snap freeze, insulated, anti magic sphere, mana source, deluge, water mastery, mystic channel. And I've got a medal of Anu and a medal of Orpheus as my active medals. All right, so let's. Um, Hope for the best. Come on, do not give them a blinding start. If they get a blinding start, we're in a heap of trouble. Right, we're not frozen, so we can look around for any potential four matches for us, which there isn't any. So now we can take a good look around and check theirs. Convert blue to red. And got a little bit of value there nothing too devastating and convert brown to red that is a lot lot worse that is do not want to give them an extra turn the only way i can really disrupt that properly is by i can take it this way that way i'd get or this way 
think that's my best bet. I could take the brown that way and get purple at the same time. No, I'm going to go with my instinct. They may take the skull hit anyway, so... Alright, I'm going to go for it that way. No, I can accept that. Alright, I do want to get my trick and treat charged up because as long as I get that, that charged up and get to throw that on that opponent we're in a certain amount of control on a game but I do want to make sure this still is not a thing because you need to check these every single round because you can just think nothing really changed but sometimes it's just something small near the top and that makes a difference convert blue to red again they've still got that obviously a small amount of benefit from that there and brown to red is no longer a thing. Right, I don't mind him giving them that. I'm not too worried about that. Because I absolutely definitely want my trick and treat charged up. So I'm going to do that. And we've got an extra turn. Fantastic. Right, I'm not going to worry about casting trick and treat on one of these. Like I said, more, far benefit, more benefit to cast on the hero. Even if Kurandara gets charged up yeah that 46 damage to all enemies is a bum ache but as long as we're safe from the yellow to doom skulls then we're not too bad all right i could hit him with that but ironically i don't actually want to kill him straight away because if they do die straight away because we're enraged as well and they're going to get double damage and that's going to do a heavy amount of damage i'd rather get some of our other troops up first i'm quite happy to give them that and let me get charged up first this is Important I control this game. Ah, they've been converted into a Rover 300. So our plan has gone slightly skew with because of what Trick and Treat just done. Basically tricked me. That's not the idea. So we've got to watch out for this now. Convert brown to red. Really good value here. I want to take that one. It's just going to drop the brown down to that one and give them that anyway. Could take this one. But, uh, crikey, this is awkward. If I take this one. It's going to drop that one down to there. All right, I'm not rushing this. Um, this is an important move. So um, grab a cup of tea and some biscuits and be happy. I've also got it there as well. That's really bad. Oof! I think this is my best bet, to be honest. All right, if I take that one, that one's going to come down three. Still going to give him this one. Wow. Could just take this brown here. Does that spoil it? Take it like that. I'm gonna get the that's gonna take that one down, so I'm not gonna get it from there. I think I've got a go defensive here and take a colour I don't particularly need straight away, but I think that is the best bet. And we did not get away with that in any way, shape or form, but by well, getting rid of their book, that has made a big difference to how we can go about things. We really need the Vinia charged. We need some life for the team. My trick and treat is only on 76 right now. No one else. Kumadara is nearly charged. I'd like to take some yellow away, but... I'm going to take red, I think. I want to get my Divinia charged up. It's okay. Alright, let's wing it a bit and give the team some life. Right, now this is what I'm on about with uh, Kurandara. The 46 damage to all enemies is interesting. We'll take that first. But um, the yellow to Doom Skulls, you have to be careful of it because obviously you got that there. I can do that by casting Divinia. But we've got a few other options first. You can check Sekma first, convert or transform blue gems to Skulls. Let's check that first. 
That's doing nothing. And brown to yellow. Brown to yellow is good, so I'm going to do that, and then we can target someone with this, which is really handy, and I'm going to bash in with that. 120 damage, and an extra turn. Fairly decent. And we've still got extra turns. Nobody's frozen, so we are good to rock and roll still right now. That was nice. Let's check this again. Blue to skulls. A single match. Three hit along the top there. Brown to yellow is not doing anything just yet, but we've got extra stuff to take yet. We'll grab these extra turns, see if we get any lucky matches. Brown to yellow, blue to skulls. Mm, not quite. See what damage. Um, we can actually take him out at the moment. Yeah, we're going to let them get a bash, but do not want them converting all these skulls. So even though we haven't got a particularly great match, I'm going to get rid of their main threat. I'm going to actually play it safe and get rid of him. That's why his second was particularly good. That's a, a bit of a pain, but not too bad at the same time, because we can cast Oni and get a summon. And that has recharged the troops at the same time. Nobody needs cleansing, so we don't need to worry about costing Divinia too much. If you can look at this again, transform blue to skulls and brown to yellow. Single hit there. Brown to yellow is good. Uh, who should we hit? Let's give him a bash. Nice skull hit. Nice charging, like Sekma gets more powerful all the time because of the gain two magic on red jam matches, which is really, really cool. Yeah, let's get rid of him and that's just the Child of Summer to deal with. Fandingus is really handy, explodes a load of purple gems and has a summon and an extra turn at the same time. Want to get Sekma charged up, so I will cast that. Now we've got Sekma charged up. Blue to skulls, brown to a yellow. We'll check that first. Nothing fantastic this time. So I'll just take the ordinary four match. Ooh. Ah. Oh. Blue to skulls, brown to yellow. So I'm not going to forget who does what. It's like there's so many different converting things on the game. It's like my brain can't take it anymore. I need to keep checking. Uh, right, let's just get some light damage going and some charging going on. See if we can get Sekma to finish them off. Blue skulls, brown, yellow. Come on. Nope. Or blue to yellow. I mean, um... No. Uh... <laughs> Mm, that was a bit rubbish. What can we do here? Ah, just hit him with some straight damage. She ain't gonna make it anyway. It's all over for her. So much yellow going on. Well, with an explosion of um, Divinia, we're going to take out Child of Summer because there's enough skulls around to make sure that. And we may charge up the team, so I'll just settle for the win against a very tricky opponent. And we've got three out of four charged. And it's a win. It's a start against... Yeah, that was a nasty team, that one. Very tricky little um, opponent there. And we've got 3,202 points. Vinyo was the MVP. Okay, fight two. Now, this is a similar kind of team again, just with one less converter, but instead we've got the Leonis Tower to deal with, another invulnerable troop. 
So I think we're going to go with the same plan again. Yeah, let's uh, make sure what we got. I've got a thief this time. Hunt, precision, shadows call, backup, stealthy. So we can't hit them. This is a little bit more tricky. So, well, we still throw the um, entangle on the first opponent. The idea is still very, very similar. All right, so yeah. Same again. Same idea again, at least. All right, and I'm in frozen, so we can get our first slap in. But this thing's got really good reductions from skulls, look, 50%. So I, yeah, I'll take that anyway. It's better than nothing. And we've got a good start on red. So an okay start, but like I say, uh, my, my plan is initially slightly flawed because Trick and Treat won't work on the Leonis Tower. So this is actually a pretty well thought out defense, to be honest, because this is invulnerable. That won't work on Entangle or anything like that. They're stealthy, so we can't target them. So they're going to get to cast that book regardless. And they're invulnerable as well. We can't do um, anything to them. So yes, this is going to be an intriguing little scrap. But we'll be able to throw a trick and treat onto their converter. And we've got lovely lots of blue all the time, but we don't need blue. But, ah, we've got Sekma charged up. This is interesting. What can we do with this? Blue to skulls, brown to yellow. Nothing on blue to skulls. Nothing really on brown to yellow either. So uh, I think we're going to throw the old trick and treat. We could take the red away from them. That'd be good. But only if brown to red doesn't do anything. Oh, it does. No, I'm going to have to throw trick and treat onto her. Right there. Doomed or whatnot is nearly ready to go. Blue skulls, brown, yellow. Blimey. Nothing much doing there. Right, on the basis that they're going to be doing some heavy damage, I'm going to cast Divinia, get the team boosted up a bit, get some mana, get some life going on. Hope for a little bit of luck. Now then, let's just check my skull situation first. Blue skulls, brown, yellow. Still nothing on on either. There's good hit there, but yeah, let's see if we can change anything up with this. How hard are we going to hit that book? 64 and 54. Hmm. Not too bad. We have got our protection on at the moment. But there's no benefit to casting Trick and Treat again just yet. I think I'm better off casting this. I'm going to try and take out that. Okay, that's not too bad. So at least we can cast Trick and Treat now on their first troop, should he survive. Which he won't. And the next one is Entangled. So this feels a little bit more under our control now. It's not quite going to die though. If one of these was a Doom Skull, we'd have been alright. But annoyingly, it's going to be... There's so much going on. Um... Brown to yellow doesn't work. Blue to skulls, not really. A couple of single hits. But we can 
hit Kulandara with that and take out their bandit, hopefully at the same time. All right, that's worked really, really well. Now, I want them to actually cast their book while that first troop is entangled, which is a strange thing. Because I don't want to kill it, and then they get a huge load of benefit from this. It says red and skulls anywhere. So, I don't actually want to hit them with a skull right now. Well, I can, but I don't want to kill them. So, I'll take a little bit of red and a single skull hit. Right, okay, that's worked out perfect. Apart from the fact their book got charged up again, which is kind of slightly put the muckers on my idea. So let's do this again. Should we apply this on their first troop? Now I've got to watch out for yellow as well now because that's um, particularly dangerous. And you've got a one there, but again, let's like say well, while they're entangled, it's not a big deal, but I've, the trouble is they're getting charged up again every single time. So I've got to bite the bullet sometime and wade in and hope stuff happens. So I'm gonna cast Divinia, get some life for the team. Now I'm relatively safe from their book. I think now is the moment, they're only on eight out of 18. There's not a ton of yellow there. I think I have to start going for it now. You've absorbed the worst that they can do. Now it's time to try and get our revenge. All right, do we cast... No, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Let's look at this. Got to look at the yellows, you see. Yellow is no, no, no. That's not a threat. No threat. No threat, no threat. So if I take this, and this yellow drops down to one, two, three. Providing we don't get unlucky with the way it drops down, when Kurandara casts, it's going to be a nothing thing. Hey, it didn't cast. That's interesting. So again, all the while that Kurandara's cast is wasted, I actually want to leave them gems as they are, but without letting them get charged up on their book at the same time. Go for it, mate. Yeah, yeah. Didn't do nothing. Alright, so we take this one, get some purple. I want to get some sort of cascade going, if I can, on some of these Doom Skulls. They cause an explosion around them, so basically it's going to cause other stuff to react at the same time. It's going to cause a decent one, I think. I'm going to take this one. And if you can take him out, and then Kurandara is quite away from being charged up, so. Right, this game looks like it's going to be okay. Wouldn't mind blue to skulls just once. But we've got enough power to kill him anyway. But um, yeah, I want to do it with some, with some skulls. I want to keep the whole team charged if I can. But not waste too many turns in the meantime. That is not the plan. Um, uh, shall I just kill it with Sigma? Me done or try and fine tune it? Nah, let's get it done. Make it some mana anyway. that 1,000 
339. Who's next? Another very similar team using the Doomed Opus. It was in the Soul Forge this week. Did recommend it as a Guild Wars defense. Obsidius is pretty decent as well, very dangerous. Interesting troop to have here. But I'm going to go with the um, theory of it ain't broken, don't fix it. Right, so no four matches for us initially. But blue to red, we have to look out for on their side. Nothing doing up there. It's a single match there, which we can remove. So I will take that red. Uh, I didn't look at that properly, did I? That was a little bit clumsy. Didn't realise that was going to give me a big old mana surge. Don't see this guy in Guild Wars very often. Let's just uh, get me old. Get some treat ready to go. Let's just chuck it on him. Avoid any more incoming damage. So when they cast their book, same theory as before. It's not going to do a lot. Do you want Divinia charged again though? Get some extra mana for the team. Some life. Just give me yellow. Don't take that. Don't use blue. It'll take some yellow from the top. But um, more important to get red. You see how good that Doomed Opus would be if um, the first troop wasn't entangled. Wow. Absolutely devastating. But it's a really good defense to it. I'm going to throw it on the second troop. Should have saved it, but oh, I was thinking about saving it just in case or throwing it on the first troop again to basically reapply everything that it gives. All right, they can be gone. Oh, they got back up. Don't like the fact that Flaming Oni is slowly burning away as are the other troops. I need to get Divinia charged up. So hopefully this will give the charge required. Not quite, not quite. Don't get clumsy now. And get some false confidence because of the first couple of games that went good. Or not good, but okay. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Get mana. Or let him have that hit and be one hit away from doom. No, can't risk it. Right. Splash damage can be pretty bad. So we'll throw it onto him. Now we're in the danger zone of their book because we've not got the first troop sorted out. But that was the risk I had to take. We have got a barrier, but um, well, I'm going to have to take red, aren't I? Really am. And hope this doesn't go too spectacularly for them. Okay. Can deal with that. We're hanging in there on this one. This is a bit of squeaky bum time on this one. All right, we should, with enraged, kill matey boy there. I think it's going to be tight. I don't think we're gonna do it. Gonna do it actually. Damn. Uh, uh. Hmm. 
Um, buh, 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 buh. It's truth. These are tricky battles. This is um, very tricky indeed. Right, we had Reflect or something then, so that's pretty good. So we've taken them out. We're back in the zone of... We've got the Entangled opponent there, which is the one we need to basically keep alive right now. But I can't give them another Skull hit, because... Oh no, they're Entangled, of course. No, so let's get... Wow! What the hell? That was a bit out of nowhere. Right, we'll take this war match. Alright, this is serious squeaky bum time. I need to make sure that they stay entangled. Blimey. Alright, I need to get rid of that opponent because then he is targetable. I need to get this charged up ASAP. While denying them the extra little bit of red they need. Alright, at least I've got that trick and treat in the bank right now as an extra cast. This is going to be a long video, unfortunately, I think. But these battles have been tricky and I'm trying to be a bit more sure of my moves. I've... Rush things before in the past when thinking, oh, is this going to make a long video? But if it's long, just get a cup of tea and a biscuit and just fast forward or something to the end and see what happened. I don't know. Right, so um, basically we want to stop them getting any kind of red. Okay, that's interesting. Now they're targetable, so good. And we're up against the frog instead. That <laughs> transform happened instantly. That was quite funny. Now, we must have a win from here because this would be really disappointing to lose to a frog. Have you got any other colours anywhere? I've got this purple. That would do. Oh, oh no, the blinking frog took out Struth. I'll stop them getting green, I suppose. Not this going to do a lot. Uh, a little bit of damage and switch us around from first place to first place. Frog versus Sekma. Who would have thought it would come down to this? But here we are. Don't really want that damage, it's all a little bit too tight. We need one hit, they need two hits. Can't take that. Yes, I can. Uh, let's check the four matches first. Nope. thing now is think, how is it possible to get a colour that I need without giving them a possibility of getting an easy skull hit? If I take it this way... It's going to bring them down. If it brings a skull with it, it should be safe. Apart from that, was the only way it could do it. You annoying game. Get out of it. Wow, that was serious squeaky bum, but a win's a win. Down to the last ally. And it's using a fun different team. Did I look at my points? No, I think I must have pushed the button by accident. Oh well. Now, Mr. Champion, El Captain the Tequila Tea. That's a mouthful. Alright, against a another hideous team. Deals a damage to an enemy boosted by my life attack and armor. If the enemy uses red mana, deal a double the damage, which they you know we're going to be using red. And then first mate Axe Blubber, the converter again. And Child of Summer, the converter again. And the Doomed Crossbow, which transforms blue to a Doom Skulls. So, a very dangerous team indeed. Let's see if we get any four matches first. And if we don't, 
check on their conversion. Blue to red. That is really good for them there. And done it in a really annoying way. When they alternate like that, it's nothing you can do about it. Unless you can disrupt it somehow or anywhere else. Wow. And I've got some, a little bit of brown to red as well. What a while, while giving me absolutely nothing. Apart from I can get some red, I suppose, but and hope for a minor miracle. But they're going to, if they cast that, then they're certainly going to um, get some charge going on. So I need to concentrate on what I do, and that is... I don't think I can stop them getting that. Nah. That is unavoidable. That is a lovely, lovely start for them. So, well, let's um, I can I'll take it this way. See if we get a double purple. See if we get a extra turn or something. But they did take the skull hit, which is. Annoying, which means we're already one slap away from losing our trick and treat. Got to take this. They're going to get that skull of that conversion there if they cast it again. Can't stop it. Need a surge from this. Right, just need to survive this. Right, okay, not too bad. Not too bad. Could have been worse. Survived their first wave, basically. The colours for us are absolutely shocking. Damn it. Take green this way, or give me a second lot of green. I suppose that's the best bet. Ah, didn't see that. Grr. So the crossbow's obviously ready to go. They've still got that. I'm not too worried about that because they're entangled. I need, need, big time to get my trick and treat ready again. All right, that's nice. Do love this 35% chance of a bandit. Are they sure it's 35% or is it 95%? Because that is like about the fourth one in a row, I think. Or at least the third. All right, they're going to be stealthy, so that's going to be awkward. So I'm going to have to chuck it on the next opponent. That does nothing. That's red going on now, which is good. There's a storm going on. We need to get rid of that. Bandit though, and hope they don't get another summon. So I've got my trick and treat ready, but I can save that. I can cast all these. Hopefully get some good chip damage, and we've got an extra turn as well. And life for the team, which is really important. And now we've got our Sekma charged up. We've got blue to skulls on Sekma, so this is starting to come together a bit now. I'll hit it on her. The reason I didn't hit the one that's entangled is because I want to keep them entangled, because it's safe from then, from when they... Um, Get to cast this. Sekma again, but no blue to skulls going on. And brown to yellow is a no-no. Suppose I could throw trick and treat on out at the bottom there just for Oh, they recovered. I should, oh, I should have saved it. Oh, always wise in the event, but you just never to know when they're gonna. That's gonna happen. That kind of thing. Right, need some life. Need some mana. Hang on, let's check the Sekma first. There's certainly not blue to skulls because there's no blue there. But brown to yellow is a decent thing. And we can hit the spider. Oh, they got another backup. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. Well, the team's getting a workout, at least. Yeah. 
Um, do, 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 do. So many choices with everybody charged. Always look for blue to skulls first on Sekma. Brown to yellow is not a thing. Could do for life, but we could do with trick and treat as well. But the trouble is, first ally, uh, enemy is stealthy, so it's not going to do anything on them. Give 40 life, it takes us up to 80. The cast is largely wasted though. Um, well, we could just take them out. But there's a lot of red there, and if they get a surge, they'll be ready to go. Ooh, this is awkward. I'm going to go for... <laughs> oh, I don't... It's not often I'm not sure what to do, but this is a really tricky situation. This could be the game decider right here. All right, if I cast Trick and Treat, I can only hit it on the bottom opponent, which is basically reapplying what was already there, but giving myself protection. If I cast Divinia, I'm going to get more life, possibly charge up herself again. And I may get lucky with the damage. I'm doing that. Right. That was all around the best decision based on pure luck, basically. Brown to yellow is not a thing with Sekma. Blue to skulls is not either. But there's not tons of red there now, so I am going to take them out. Look around for blue to skulls first before I do anything at all. Brown to yellow, not a thing either. Now the skulls are lovely for Sekma. Right, and a annoyingly hard fought victory, but yeah, some tough teams here. Red Day is always tricky. One thousand five hundred and ninety-three points, I believe that was. Now, who's Paragon Space Wolf? That's a pretty cool name. Child of Summer, Yalgwai, Trick and Treat, and Firk's First Mate Axe Blubber. So another double converter team. Child of Summer again. First mate, Axe Lubber again. Trick and Treat, as we know, is very handy. And Yao Guai, he deals damage to the first two enemies boosted by his life. So uh, true damage can be a thing with this team. So I may consider a change here. Basically, they've got their Trick and Treat there, and they're using Elementalist. And what I like to defend against Elementalist is the voice of Orpheus on Red Day. Other days may be applicable. Yellow and purple. So I'm going to replace Sekma with him because basically cleanse all allies when matching yellow gems gives us an extra cleanse, which is very important against the Elementalist class. So we've got two chances to get cleansed because they probably will get some four matches. We can either do it by a yellow match or by casting uh, Divinia. And we'll try and counter their Yaogwai with a trick and treat on him. So that's the plan. I'm going to stick with this team and jump straight in. Just hope they don't get a good start on the um, red, because if they do, then Yaogwai is big league, super dangerous. Around four matches for us first, and nothing going on. Brown to red. Initial glance is that is absolutely fantastic for them. They've got it right there. And that is about it. But blue to red. Is no. No four match anyway, so that's not as bad. So I definitely need to disrupt this. This is like way, 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 way too good. Um, oh, don't really like taking a colour I don't use, but sometimes kind of feels like you have no choice. This actual line needs disrupting. And the only way to do that is to pick up brown. May get yellow off it from the top. 
pretty much oh, all I can do. And that has really set them up really, really badly. Alright, we are in a lot of bother already. Because we're frozen on flaming only. If I take that, we're going to lose a turn while collecting colours we don't really care about. Well, I care about it because it's for flaming only, but it's about getting trick and treat, which is going, which is the main thing. That is the thing with this game. If it gives them a lightning start, there's not a lot you can do. I've got no real choice really but to take this. This is by far the best bet. So at least if I lose, at least Divinia, maybe more. Then at least I can get some goblins back or something. I don't know. It's the best bet right now. All right. Trick and treat. Hang in there by the absolute skin of its teeth and bloody Yelgwai. Legendary troop, my left thing. It's not. It's mythic all day long. It's an amazing troop. Absolutely amazing. Right, we need Flaming Oni to um, survive. And so much for my tactic on Voice of Orpheus. Looks like it's been hit with Trick and Treat. So that curse is one of those things. That's the only way. Two things happen there which are normally pretty unlikely. Like, uh, first of all, Trick and Treat had to decide to cast it on Voice of Orpheus. And then actually, actually do it, and that's exactly what it did. Right, Trick and Treat, we need you to cast on the Trick and Treat itself. Yeah, have a taste of your own medicine, Sunshine. Right, we need to get another troop back, get some mana going by casting Philemononi. And spark on almighty recovery, hopefully. Don't use blue. Wow, this game, game is being absolutely horrid. But this is literally that and that are the only, only moves I can make. So what's going to be the best one? Make it a green after that, I suppose, in the middle. Trick and treat ready again. All right, we can we can live with that. Let's get everybody bloody entangled and everything. And we hang in there. The trick and treat is just about saving the day right now. But it's very definitely squeaky bum, bum time at an early stage. Let's get some damage going on. Need to get my Fleming only charged up again. Get an extra troop. But the game is controlling me right now. There's not a lot you can do when it does these things, when it's just constantly giving you a very limited amount of moves. All right, I'm going to have to... Oh, I should have taken that purple. That was really clumsy. I wish there was a cancel on this. There's no cancel move button, if you know what I mean. Cat is already shouting for his dinner because it's half past 12 and it's, it's like an alarm clock basically. The second it goes it's half past 12, I don't know what timer cats have got built into them, but it's pretty astonishing because he knows it's half past 12 and he's already shouting for his dinner. No, I'm, I'm not blaming it on the cat. I'm not blaming that bad move on the cat. That would be unfair on the cat, but it technically was the cat's fault. Technically, technically. Alright, at least, at least we have the game under some element of control. Right, as a summon, so we'll definitely do that. I didn't even look what the spell done then. I was <laughs> trying to rush the game now because... Um, this has been far too long, this this Guild Wars battle. I feel like I'm slightly out of touch with it all, to be honest. And they were hard teams. There's no way these were easy teams. It shows the resilience of Trick and Treat, how that was absolutely battered in the early stages of this fight, but it seems to be hanging in there. What does this do? That's okay, that's damage is magnified because of the effect of trick and treat. Mm 
We're good. Burn. It's going to be a long but successful 5 0 day. 5 0 day by the look of it. Like I say, it's bracket 2. We were amazingly close to going out to bracket 1 last time. A lot of people in our guild thought we'd made it. Um, not quite sure what happened. Maybe some teams got some last second points, which we weren't ready for or something. But um, yeah, we, were, we thought we were in bracket one, but alas, still in bracket two. So there it is, but still very tough. It's literally almost as tough as it can possibly get. So I'm pretty pleased with that 5-0, 1,658 points from that battle. And a 5-0 day. Apologies for the long video. If you sat through the whole thing, then jolly well done to you. There will be a lollipop hidden somewhere. This was not the reason to make the video long. You saw how tough them battles were. They were really tough. But 9,081 points is... Yeah, it's all right. 5 out of 5 is good, but, you know, it's low 9,000s. You kind of want more than that, really. But I'm overall happy with the 5-0. So there's the video. If you liked it and want to see more, be sure to like and subscribe. But thanks for watching. See you again next time. Bye for now.